Hey guys, this is Tom from Amped Airsoft. Today I'm going to be going over how we build a PVS-14 with a photonist tube installed inside of it. So we're going to walk through the entire process from start to finish, opening up all the packaging and the final preparation of the tube. So let's get into it. So this is how it's generally going to come. It's going to come with green bag of death is generally what people call it because it, it is not protective at all. You should definitely find a better protection for your night vision unit. That is also why we give you a Pelican case when you buy from us so that there's better protection for your unit. You're going to go into the, the white box and you're going to take out anything else that you need for assembly. So this is your Carson PVS-14 housing. So as you can see, there's four screws holding it together. That's the main points holding the top and the bottom of the housing together. There is a battery cap retainer, and there is also going to be an illuminator on the front here. This is your objective lens. This is your eyepiece lens. This is your power. And then there's your purge port right there. There's your mounting point for your J-arm as well. We're gonna put some gloves on. The reason we're putting gloves on is to make sure that we are not putting any fingerprints or putting any oil on any glass surfaces. If you have worked on camera equipment, this will be very similar mindset. You don't want any foreign oils, debris, or anything on the pieces of glass because that can affect clarity and quality of the glass. So that is why I'm putting gloves on because I'm going to start working with the glass directly. So I'm going to take the eyepiece off first to kind of show you guys how easy it is. I'm going to grab onto the eyepiece assembly and not the locking ring. They are two separate things and you'll be able to see that as I take this off. These units basically go together like Legos. They're very easy to install. There is some fine tune work going on with them, but realistically I am literally just unscrewing this with my hand. There's special tools for it if you want to use them. I find it just as easy to do it with my hand. It gives me a little bit more control, I feel. So that is the eyepiece assembly. What I'm going to check right now is I'm going to turn this ring to kind of see the O-ring that creates a seal. I'm checking to make sure there's enough lubrication on here. It looks like there is enough white grease on here that I am not going to add anymore. That's why I do have the silicone-based tech tee. You really should only be using a silicone-based grease when working with these types of O-rings. There's plenty on there, so I'm not gonna over-grease it and risk putting anything on the lenses. I'm now gonna check the objective lens to see if the locking ring is on there. It was installed already. You can kind of look down there and see it. Basically, that's gonna lock it in place so it doesn't come the whole way out. All right, now we're gonna start uh, fully disassembling, getting really into this unit. So we're gonna take these four two millimeter Allen screws out there is this battery cap retention lanyard here. It's made out of a metal wire, and it is retained by this uh, two mil Allen key here. It basically clamps between the two halves of the housing. When you're taking it apart, you wanna make sure that you don't lose any of these screws. And when you put it back together, you wanna make sure that that lanyard is in place and in the groove that it goes into so you don't crack the housing as you're tightening down with these screws when you're putting everything back together. That will mess up your seal. That will do a lot of bad things. You do not want to do that. Okay, so this is the inside of the, again, a Carson PVS-14 housing. Um, the main electronic components are going to be in my right hand right now. I am showing you that battery lanyard. That's where the groove that it goes into, if you guys can see that on camera. Just make sure that that's not screwed up when you print it back in. Battery cap right here. This is your manual gain knob. This is going to be your illuminator housing for an IR illuminator. This is gonna be your pigtail that's gonna connect your two halves together. We're gonna to press down on that later after we get the tube going. Those are gonna be your connection points right there for that pigtail. And then there's gonna be two contact points to power your tube as well. Now I'm just checking to make sure that this is operating properly. One other thing I wanna point out here is that we are going to put the tube in there. We're going to make sure that that glass is clean and clear debris. This is gonna be a new Photonist tube, brand new. We have our spec sheet over here and we can kind of see what's going on with it. And we wanna make sure that the serial number of the spec sheet matches up to the serial number on the tube so that we know what exact tube we're working with since we have multiple tubes in stock. I think Photonist tubes probably have the best uh, packaging. They're all individually packaged and it's really nice to have if you have an old tube and you wanna store it for a future project if you're upgrading. So the tube will have a film on the front of it, it will have this cap on the back of it, and there'll be another film underneath it. Just checking to make sure that all the foam and everything's off of this, so I'm going to hit this with a little bit of air to kind of clean all the uh, little bit of foam debris. The air I'm using, it does have a filter going on with it, and it also does have some anti-static. There's an anti-static system 
for that air setup to make sure that we're not hitting this thing with ions that could damage any sensitive electronic components. One of the other things that's protected on here is the prongs for the manual gain pigtail. The pigtail is going to get plugged into the board in four different points and it is protected with this little plastic protector on it. There are these two power pads basically that uh, are going to be connected onto the PCB board. Uh, those are going to create the main source of power for the tube as well as the pigtail. Those are the four points in which the pigtail will be connected. You can notice that they're too close to each other and too farther away from each other. Uh, that way that you do not orient the pigtail wrong when you're plugging it in. You can't mess it up in any way. Um, when you remove this plastic protector or whatever protector is over the pigtails, you want to make sure that you don't bend them accidentally. And that can happen a lot of times. They're very easy to move, but you just need to make sure that they are all good to go. So I'm just going to check these, make sure that they did not get bent, and they did not. So I'm going to start installation of the tube. So when you're putting it in, you're going to slide the entire tube in first. You're going to fold the pigtail down so it goes in with the tube. That's why I'm removing this protective cap here. I try and keep all the protective stuff on while installing so there's no risk of me putting smudges on things, dust getting on stuff, and just making sure that the unit uh, stays as clean as possible when assembling it. It's also why I have kind of a felt uh, table topper so that if I am setting glass stuff down, it's on a softer surface. I'm just gonna take some more air just to double check that I have no debris in there. I'll probably be doing this a few more times. All right, so we're gonna remove this film, but not the other one, because this is gonna go up against the objective. So this is gonna be the side of the intensifier that is going to be facing away from you and going up against the objective lens. You will notice, if you can, that there is a notch in the tube that is gonna line up with a pin inside of the housing so it will yeah, it'll lock in, it'll index properly into the housing so you have no risk of putting this in wrong. So long as this little notch here matches up with the pin. Like I said, we're gonna gently put that ribbon wire through with the tube and we're gonna pull it up through as the tube slides in. This is also, again, why I'm wearing gloves because you could definitely be touching glass right here and you don't wanna cause smudging. Now we're still gonna have the film here. We're not gonna take that off yet again because I wanna not worry about debris getting on any pieces of glass. I wanna remove that at the very last second that I can. So now I'm gonna connect that original pigtail onto those two posts. So that'll connect the two parts of the housing together electronically. After that, we will connect the pigtail coming off the tube so that we have manual gain. A Little bit of force and gently applying force, uh, you can get everything in. Again, you're working with copper, you're working with uh, soft metals, they can bend on you you need to apply force deliberately, but gently at the same time. And that's basically how it's supposed to look. You're gonna fold these ribbon wires in, again, gently. You don't want them to get crimped on anything, and you wanna make sure they all fall into the housing so that they are not getting pinched. We're gonna reattach this battery retention wire, again, putting it in the groove so that when we close everything up, it does not crack the housing and not create a sealing issue when we go to nitrogen purge this later. I'm now going to install the four screws and we're gonna do this in a crisscross pattern so that we apply force equally across the housing so that we don't have a gasket pinched so that we have a good seal. Again, so we maintain waterproofing and we maintain the nitrogen purge that we'll do later. Um, yes, these units should be waterproof up to a certain degree if you do not mess up any of the O-rings and gaskets that they have. Normally, uh, there is a retaining ring and a light pipe ring that is supposed to be in the white box that happened to be in the green bag. So I have this clear light pipe ring in my left hand and a silver retaining ring for the tube in my right hand. Before I install this down on the tube, I'm gonna grab this pick and I'm gonna just gently pull on the side of the sticker. I'm not touching the glass, I'm touching the edge of the tube so that there's no risk of me scratching the glass. Do not want to be anywhere near the glass. All I'm trying to do is lift up the sticker. There is there is a little piece of the sticker that sticks off. And I'm just going to peel that off now that I have it up. And I'm going to remove that final seal that's over the glass. 
We'll do another clean with the air and just check for debris after we do this. Probably have the air at about, I want to say anywhere between 80 to 110 PSI. I don't want it to be, you know, at like 200 or 300 PSI where now I might be damaging something. When you put the light pipe in, this is what it's going to look like. You want to look for the little indicator that says up on it. And then there's a little rectangle right here that'll fall into a groove and you're just going to press it in and then the retaining ring will hold it in place. Again, this is another reason why I'm wearing gloves. I'm working very close to glass. I do not want to cause smudging. Okay, so I'm gonna grab out a special tool that I use to install the retaining ring. You can use a flat head, you can use your fingernail, um, but there is a proper tool for this. It's sold online. So this has uh, two little prongs on it. It's gonna match up with the retaining ring that has two little slots on it. It fits right into the housing and it's gonna apply equal pressure around the entire ring so that I'm not cross-threading it. If it goes in crooked, you could risk damaging an O-ring that's inside of the uh, eyepiece. Um, so I'm just gonna set this in here, try and get it started with my finger and then I'm gonna use this tool. Now I'm going counterclockwise at first to try and feel where the threads start. That way I don't cross-thread you are working with an injection molded plastic and metal. So the injection molding is the housing and the metal is the ring. You want to very much avoid cross threading. It's very easy to do on, on this kind of plastic and these threads are very fine. So now I'm just gonna check and make sure that everything is seated properly. Just wanna make sure this is not too loose. Hit it with the tool again, didn't quite get it. And I stopped myself before cross threading. So we're gonna go one more time. It is it you do have to have like a little bit of a feel for it once you get a feel for it yep there it goes so now i'm just going to tighten down on it should be good to go and you can very visibly see you probably can't see it on the camera but to my eye while i'm working on it you can see if it's crooked or not you can kind of cant the housing and everything to see if it's crooked or not so since we're working plastic we're going to hit it again with, with some uh, air to clean out any debris that might have gotten uh, caused by the metal ring interacting with the plastic housing. That can happen oftentimes at this step. Again, why I'm using gloves and why uh, I'm hitting this with air so many times. Uh, you can use camera cleaning brushes. You can use uh, microfiber towels as well to help with cleaning. So we're gonna hit the eyepiece as well with some air to make sure there's no debris on there, visually inspecting it as well. Once I put these two things together, there'll be two pieces of glass that now are not gonna ever really come apart unless it needs serviced. So that's why I'm triple checking that there's no debris. And then this just hand tightens back down. Uh, you'll feel the O-ring hit into the plastic housing and then you'll just tighten past that. And then you'll just go to the eyepiece locking ring and tighten it back up. Just checking functionality, making sure there's no uh, grinding or anything happening with the objective or the eyepiece now that it's fully installed. So we're gonna take the battery cap off and we're gonna do an electronic test before we move on to the nitrogen purge and the seal test. So you know, I'm just putting a double A battery in. Uh, there's a diagram. Use your eyeballs, you can probably figure it out. Um, I'm gonna put the front cap back on it to turn this on. Now, there really shouldn't be any light coming in, so it's gonna be hard for me to tell, but I do have the background light on, so just trying to make sure I have stuff good. I'm gonna pull this cap off just a touch to let some light in, not a lot, and you can kind of see a grayness to the eyepiece. You are getting some reflection, but you can see that grayness kind of forming a circle. You can see it turning on and off as I'm turning the dial. Uh, so that's me checking to make sure that things are working properly electronically. I'm just gonna put my hand in front of it with some dimmer lighting so you guys can really see. I don't normally do this kind of testing, but I just wanna show this off. So you guys are seeing what's going on. You can kinda of see some static right now. And that's just checking again, making sure things are turning on and off, doing an electronics test to make, make sure you put everything in the right way. The tube is sitting right the right way in the housing. And at that point, we're basically done working with glass, so I'm gonna take these gloves off because they suck to work with. And now we're gonna start working on the purge. So nitrogen purging, what we're gonna be doing here is there's a little purge port. I need a little flathead here, so I'm gonna go grab that. We're gonna take the purge port out. It has an O-ring on it. Sometimes it likes to stay in there. It does stay in there for me, so I'm gonna pull it out with uh, just a little pick and put it back on the screw. 
reason I'm doing that is because there's also an O-ring on the fitting that I use on the purge kit, and that will create a not a good seal, so I want to get that out of there and put on the screw. The other reason for doing it is when I go back to quickly put the plug back on, I don't want a lot of nitrogen coming back out because it's all pressurized, so I want to have that screw prepped and ready for me to plug it back up. So what we're doing is we are trying to get rid of any moist ambient air out of this housing using a vacuum that is created with a hand pump and then replacing all that moist ambient air with nitrogen gas. The green hose is going to be what attaches to the unit. The pink hose is going to be the pump system and the blue hose is going to the nitrogen which has a regulator and a tank connected to it. I'm only having that regulator run at about five PSI. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna pump. So we're gonna pump the whole way down to negative 20 inches of mercury, and we're gonna make sure that it holds. It's very important that the pressure holds there to make sure that the seal is good. We're gonna count to five and make sure that that, that needle does not move on me. If it doesn't move, that means this thing has a good seal, and it means that this thing is ready to have nitrogen put in it. If it moves on me, then we need to go back in and adjust how we screwed those screws down, make sure that those O-rings on the eyepiece and the objective lens are properly greased, make sure everything is sealed properly. So since it is, we're going to now start putting nitrogen into this. So we're gonna flip this up and away from the pump. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fiddle with this regulator back and forth until I start getting pressure built up into the tube. The white thing is the nitrogen tank, and I'm just gonna go back and forth for a bit on this regulator until we start building pressure. This rig kinda sucks, but so I have to go back and forth on it. Uh, and eventually, you'll notice the dial starts to go up on the where you saw it go negative 20. It's gonna go up now on the right side to three PSI. Once I get it to three PSI, I'm going to then remove the hose there'll be nitrogen gas still coming out, and then I will switch it down to pump. The reason I wanna have nitrogen gas still coming out is because then I know that the last thing in this housing is nitrogen gas and not ambient air, and then I'm quickly going to install that plug again. And like I said, quickly install that plug so we don't have as, as little ambient air getting in there as possible. Obviously, there's going to be a tiny amount, but now this unit is properly nitrogen purged. So that's basically it, guys. That's how you uh, full installation of a tube. Uh, there are a few more uh, tests I go in to generally uh, just to confirm a few extra things, but not anything more than what I basically showed you on the table. Uh, a lot of those light tests I do in uh, a different area of the building, but I figured for the video it was easier to show you here. We did just get in a bunch of new Photonist tubes. If you guys are looking for a very high quality, uh, budget-minded night vision tube that's going to perform very well for airsoft and mixed lighting conditions, Go pick some of those up right now. Uh, we have a ton of them in stock. Thank you guys. This has been another video from Amped Airsoft.